Well, here we are back at the system uh, following a uh, update of our software. And most of you will uh, remember Tomas here. He decided to uh, pop on up and have a look and see how they were going to solve our uh, our issue. So, as you recall, uh, we've been having a issue with the system rogue charging, and the only solution that I could see that had any chance of working really would be to up. Upgrade, upgrade the uh, the software to the most current version. Now, for whatever reason, our system had been on some kind of a software lock where they weren't doing regular updates. And I, I don't know whether that meant that we got stuck on a weird system or whatnot, but uh, uh, I had when I first noticed the rogue charging, I tried to do a video to try and get out to you guys and reached out to Tomas to try and duplicate that on the system. Happen, yeah. yeah, and... and It wasn't happening. Yeah, and so, we, you know, we uh, at that point, we tried to compare our software versions. Uh, he was, uh, he had just been pushed, because uh, I think you said you did think you noticed a rogue charge. I had one charge. Yeah, yeah, and, and so then by the time we compared notes, I think I was on one 442 and you were on 1444 or something right. like that. Right. And so just kind of stuck there and, uh, and and had been you know causing us these kind of intermittent faults. And as you're seeing now, as I'm pre presenting the, the final uh, information, the final raw data gathering for these last few weeks in, in December, we're still in the, now we're in the third month of, of 2020, where we're still kind of wrestling, or were still kind of wrestling with this rogue charging that was uh, uh, that was occurring. But uh, as we finished off the last couple of weeks in December, it just made it very difficult to present anything that was really kind of meaningful. Obviously, I couldn't screw with the system at all. Anytime I monkeyed with the system, boom, it would immediately trigger a rogue charge. You'll see that as we do the final two weeks in uh, uh, in, in December. So uh, being able to talk with folks like Tomas and Lee, uh, it was really invaluable to, to be able to try and tease out what, uh, what the hell was going on. Now, I don't know why they locked us out of those, whether it was because we had a large system, but Tomas has got four, four batteries, four power walls. So, uh, but to uh, not make this video real long, we had a marvelous conversation with uh, one of the gals over at Tesla. I will not mention her name because some of the things that we uh, uh, spoke about, um, she was uh, incredibly open with us as far as some of the struggles that, that Tesla was kind of going through behind the scenes and had a marvelous conversation with her. But, uh, uh, the uh, the experience that people have had with Tesla customer support it really varies. I think uh, yeah, folks don't get yeah they don't yeah. get gals like her. Not very. You know you're yeah. yeah you know so your your experience may may wind up not being such a, such a good one. I don't know but. The uh, long and the short of uh, the solution for this video is is that she was able to push us to the latest known working version of this uh, 1.45.1. Uh, Tomas is uh, going to get in contact with uh, Sunworks and Tesla and have them push that version to his system as well. Uh, kind of waiting on my uh, um, results. Uh, yeah, my reports here on, on whether or not it's stable. But I'll uh, uh, when I go back to the studio and, and compile this video to release to you guys. I'll uh, pull up some screenshots and so sh show you some of the uh, uh, operating modalities. One thing that we did notice or what I noticed right away is that now when you uh, put the system to 100%, it doesn't change right away, but all the other settings, we change it to 10% or change it to 0%, it did actually seem to uh, react right away. So that was interesting there. Um, so uh, I'll let you know a little bit more information on that. But uh, uh, so far, it looks like we're fixed. And so I will monitor the system before I release this video and to see if we've cleared out those transitional spikes as well. Right. Hopefully that's also solved. Um, but uh, other than that, that's uh, about it for this short and sweet uh, update. And uh, thanks. Yeah. Thomas for popping on over and uh, and seeing this. Well, it's and nice to see the system in person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, so. it's, it's the real deal. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they made him put in an awful lot of more boxes than I 
unfortunately he didn't have to put in. So yeah. I, I appreciate his growing pain so that I didn't have to go through all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and that's, you know, a lot of it is that's why we're doing this. You know, the, some of the stuff that they made us do was just absolutely ridiculous. Now they did actually force you to put in that second meter. Yeah. Yep. So that was, you know, yeah, no getting uh, away from that. Uh, and, and again, that's a stupid thing yeah. to, to, to put in. A, a, they want to know how much solar I'm making. And yeah. You know, I, I said, well, I can give you that number off the app, you know. Yeah. It tells me right here. And I'm, maybe, and, and ultimately, maybe that is designed to curtail what we talked about before about dynamic solar to make sure that the solar that people are creating isn't going somewhere else. Helped. Right. And yeah. that, you know, that, yeah. oh, you know, oh, we don't, you know, because the last thing these utility companies want, and this is very clear, the last thing they want is for you to make your own power, meaning all of it, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, they want just, to monitor. That's exactly what they want to make sure that yeah. they're, they're getting something. something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So anyway, all right. All right. Well, thanks for uh, joining us on this quick little uh, update. I hope you found this interesting. So I'm going to go ahead back over to the uh, studio and uh, uh, compile some of this for you, and we'll get it uh, get it released. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, back here at the studio. Uh, the intro that you just saw was filmed on the 12th. That was the day before yesterday. I wanted to give the system at least a full 24 hour cycle so that I could examine it before I made any kind of pronouncements over whether or not the software was fixed. Even though it was pretty clear from even just when we first turned the system on that they solved the problem. Uh, biggest thing obviously was that we weren't able to get it to go, go into a rogue charge and we could always get it to go into a, into a rogue charge so that was solved right away. But the other thing that we noticed even within just a few hours of, of having this software up was that we were back to having that flat line display. We weren't getting these wild uh, crazy ticks uh, from the uh, inflow and outflow. We'll go ahead and take a look at that right now. Uh, so this is going to be a story quickly told in several screenshots so we can get uh, our point across here really quickly without boring you all to tears. But to start us off, let's have a look at a time in August that was well before Tesla started to alter their uh, uh, software in regards to that switching. And so we'll pull up here. Here's a shot from back in August. And again, we had to be careful when choosing these to make sure that they were from days where we were running only on battery power and where we weren't running on zombie apocalypse mode or trying to charge uh, or, or at a point where we we're charging to the grid. We had to have a battery that was not full, not empty. And so there was some specific criteria that we uh, had to uh, have in order to be able to uh, choose a particular day. And so this was the worst day that I was able to find with a 0.5 kilowatt hour pole showing from the grid uh, enough so that you can uh, see the little ticks even that were, were shown there, those two that, that, that were, were pulled up there. Um, and then uh, from a few days earlier, uh, this is basically just the reverse of that showing a um, uh, 0.5 kilowatt hour to the grid, uh, just to kind of give us a, an idea. Now, again, these were the worst case scenarios that I uh, that that I was ever able to find. Uh, for the most part, prior to September, these swings generally were in that 0.2 to 0.3 kilowatt hour uh, range. Like you see here, this was typical of what we saw, and then obviously those cancel each other out. So you're really not looking at any kind of a cumulative, uh, a, a, a cumulative error anymore. And so that was, uh, that was good there. Now, we had some other issues in September, as you'll recall, um, both with the system, but then also the system was continually charging to the grid most days. And so it was really difficult to find days that I knew cleanly met uh, the criteria that we just laid out. So instead of se September, let's go ahead and pull up some screenshots from October to allow us to contrast what we just seen with uh, the uh, August shots here. And so here, uh, I pull up three of these. Here we have uh, screenshots of the grid graphs for the 4th, 6th, and 7th. And again, I'm not cherry picking here, I'm just having to choose days where we ran totally on battery power. And at this time of year, we're still having occasional days where we were legitimately exporting to the grid. So obviously we need to avoid those days. But on the days you see here, the battery was not full, also not empty, reserve set to zero. So again, these days are chosen Again, identical operating criteria, and what you see here is the from the grid numbers that are slightly elevated from what we saw in August, but the to the grid er errors have nearly doubled. 
And so that was what really was kind of concern, concerning us on a day-to-day -day basis because, again, that's not an insignificant error if you're talking about a system that's just going to wind up riding that way um, with basically a, a, a half a kilowatt hour per day just stacking up. That was not really going to, uh, going to work long term. Um, but again, I put this error at around half a kilowatt per day, and I think that, that number is accurate, and here's why. You, you see not only this exact amount that we've seen that, that is elevated, if you look, if you compare the numbers from August to October, you kind of see that, uh, that range. But we have this from October 24th. <clears throat> now, on this one, we're showing one kilowatt from the grid and uh, point, uh, eight kilowatt hours to the grid. So why was October 24th significant? Well, October 24th was significant because the grid wasn't even connected. So everything you see here is error. Uh, and so it's pretty safe to say that whatever they did to their software, Nears makes no difference, doubled the severity of these switching errors. And that was then though, and this is now, so this video obviously is supposed to be about their fix, right? So currently, the system is sitting at, at kind of 60, 70 percent uh, uh, charge range. We've been putting some uh, uh, charge to the car, and so it's just been kind of uh, hanging out at that range. Uh, and so uh, for both yesterday and today, if we look back, we're showing an in and out of that kind of 0.3 kilowatt our uh, range that we were showing before all of this started and we'll pull these up so this was uh, again for uh, yesterday and that shows our graph for the entire day and so again prior to August and September that was uh, uh, how we were running a nice flat line with an in and out that basically cancels itself out and so you have no accumulated error and again the parameters for this battery can't be full nor empty, home must be running off of battery power, not on zombie apocalypse mode, uh, and uh, uh, the um, obviously not exporting anything uh, legitimately uh, to the grid. And then the one thing admittedly that I haven't done is I haven't actually put it on zombie apocalypse mode right now, disconnecting the grid entirely to see if Tesla had put back that line of code <laughs> that says to make sure that <laughs> the grid, that, that the in and out numbers are zero if the grid is shut off. But it's likely that they did that. And I'll, you know, I'll follow up on that uh, maybe with a later video and just, you know, if it doesn't turn out to be the case. But the final thing I'll mention here is that I've not been able to initiate the rogue charges no matter what I did. And trust me, I've tried. So that is uh, most definitely solved. So let's close this video out for what you need to look for. And so if you're having any of these issues, these great switching errors, or certainly if you're having an issue where you are doing these rogue, getting these rogue charges, go to the first screen for your power walls and scroll to the bottom. It pulls up here real quick. Um, and uh, what you'll see listed there is your software revision number. And if you're running 1.44.2, then you are certainly running on that affected software where you know we've had all of uh, all of these issues. Now, when we tried to verify with uh, Tomas as to what was going on here, he was running 1.45. Excuse me, he was running 1.44.4 and was also not able to replicate what we were seeing. Um, but that said, the latest revision that we were then sent to that fixed all of this was 1.45.1. And so that's the software that, uh, that you're looking for to, uh, to fix any issues that you might be having. If you're not running that revision, maybe you can contact Tesla and uh, have them uh, push that to you. But, uh, I'd like to uh, close this out by thanking the folks at, uh, at Sunworks. They've been very busy with the PG&E power outages that we had uh, at the tail end of last year, in September, October, November. Um, they've been really busy installing systems and so again giving them quite a bit of, uh, of rope there. Uh, also this is not a new issue that they've been working with with Tesla. We've been struggling obviously with this for six months now and so thanks uh, to the folks with Sunworks to helping us for helping us through this uh, issue and then also I'd love to get uh, give a shout out to uh, Tesla technical support. Now again your mileage may vary. 
when you talk to somebody at Tesla Tech Support, we wound up having a fantastic gal, won't mention any names, but uh, I'd like to thank uh, them for not only solving this issue, but also letting us know a little bit about the behind the scenes stuff that was going on that actually caused this to begin with. And you know, that you know gives you at least a, um, an understanding of some of the things that, that they were going through, that they were trying to solve in, in the background behind this. And again, it's just software. These are some of the finest batteries available uh, it's certainly that, that anything that, that we've seen even on the horizon so and it's just some teething pains getting through these uh, uh, these little software issues and a shout out obviously to Tomas it was great fun having you coming out to uh, to see the system I'm glad that that worked for your uh, uh, schedule and uh, hopefully you enjoyed seeing our wall of redundancy uh, but uh, I hope you guys found this useful and thanks for watching we'll See you soon as we finish out our year uh, of raw data and uh, get to the meat and bones of this project.